Hello to our Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church members and our listeners to our Faith Pathway Sunday School lesson. Our lesson for this Sunday, October the 13th, 2019, is Lesson 7, and it's from Unit 2, which is entitled, Responses to God's Faithfulness. And this Sunday's lesson, Lesson 7, is titled, Doing Right Pays Off. Doing Right Pays Off. Our devotional reading is from the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. Our background scripture is 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 24. And our printed passage is also from the book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 16. Our key verse is from 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verse 16. And it reads, The jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. And that was from our NIV version. Now our lesson's aims are Tell how the widow of Zarephath was blessed for her faithfulness to do as the prophet instructed her. Also, feel confident that God will reward sacrificial faithfulness today. And plan to support some person or cause, either materially or in other ways, as an act of faithfulness to God. Now, our lesson for this Sunday has three different divisions to it, and the first one is entitled, A New Assignment. And then the second is, Doing Right tested. And our last section is entitled, Doing Right is Rewarded. (laughs) Now, our lesson is dealing with Elijah, and in the 17th chapter of 1 Kings, it begins with the ministry of Elijah. And it follows with instructions that were given to Elijah from God. And the requirements or the expectations of Elijah to follow through upon the instructions that was given to him from God. And then we find the results or we find the outcome of what occurs when Elijah follows through on what was instructed to Elijah to do. Now, to understand the behavior and to understand the uh, reactions uh, to our lesson for this Sunday, our devotional reading, it would be highly advised to read the devotional reading because it does set forth a certain mindset in tune, um, how our thoughts and uh, our perceptions and uh, our understanding of our relationship with the Creator, how that should be Uh, practice, uh, what then should be our uh, reactions to the utterance and the leading of God's Word, and how that should be internalized 
into our thinking. Uh, so the third uh, chapter of the book of Proverbs, the book of wise instruction. And uh, in your spare time, I would uh, recommend reading it because, uh, in fact, just as uh, the opening, uh, as we indulge into our lesson, uh, I will read uh, the third chapter of Proverbs because it provides good verbiage, good uh, understanding uh, and instruction. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. The Word of God is always applicable to every generation in all times and at every time. And those words in the book of Proverbs are quite fitting, uh, not just for uh, the lesson today, but as I have said, uh, the Word of God is relative uh, to our lives and to the different conditions and situations that we find ourselves in. And so the more that we read and understand and apply uh, the teachings and the Word of God to our lives, then, as Proverbs said, then the fullness of our life is more complete. The blessings of God are constant, and um, it, is re it is upon us to live out the things that we are taught and understand in God's Word. Now, our lesson uh, for today, uh, the new assignment, uh, focuses on how the Word of God came to Elijah and instructed Elijah to go uh, to the uh, region of Sidon and to stay there. And there he would be directed to a widow to supply him with food. Now, uh, prior to this, uh, we find that Elijah was also instructed again to go to another region and uh, there God provided for the ravens to bring unto Elijah food to sustain him in this journey that the Lord was taking him to. And so here Elijah doesn't know the widow uh, that he is to meet in Zarephath but He's instructed that when he comes to the town gate, there he would find a widow. And the widow would be gathering sticks. And he is to ask the widow to bring him a little water in a jar for him to drink. So, uh, we find that um, 
sometimes uh, our lives take twists and turns. And when uh, those occurrences happen, uh, what our response is to the new territories, to the new areas, to the new experiences, uh, we first have to make sure that we have bathed ourselves into the will of God so that we recognize that these places, uh, these uh, new environments, these uh, uh, new challenges that we face are in the will of God and we must constantly lean upon God's direction and upon the utterance of what God is saying to us so that uh, we are assured that we are not acting in and of ourselves, but we are indeed being led by the Spirit of God. And many times, uh, God allows us to know that you have made the correct choice, and yes, I am with you, because when we respond to God's instructions, as we find in the new assignment here, that once Elijah did as God instructed him to do, God, uh, Elijah meets the woman in Zarephath, and she is found doing exactly what the Lord had told him, that when he found the widow, that she would be gathering sticks, and Elijah finds the widow doing exactly what the Word of God had told him. And so, when we find ourselves in obedience and doing what God has instructed us to do, then along that path, along that journey, God allows us to see that, yes, I am with you, and as I told you, these would be the things that would happen. He allows us those things to occur so that we recognize that exactly what God told me is exactly what is happening. Now, as we said in our first section, that once Elijah entered into the region uh, of Zarephath, um, then when he got towards the entrance to the township, there he found the widow, just as the Lord had said, gathering sticks, and he asked of her to bring him water to drink. And when we come to the second section of our lesson, ver uh, verses 11 through 14, here we uh, now hear of the engagement between Elijah and the widow. And as she was going, she heard what he asked. And while she was gathering sticks for the, her own needs and the needs of her own household, um, she stops and she begins to go and bring him water. And we find through verses 11 through 14, that while she was doing this, she was also pleaded by Elijah to bring her a piece of bread. And he instructs her that, and, I mean, as she responds now, now we get the engagement of the widow. And uh, she replies to him and says, Surely as the Lord God, Lord your God, lives... Now, she identifies and she lifts that she recognizes that the, he is a man of God. 
And then she says to him that as surely as your God lives, I don't have any bread, only a handful, just a little olive oil. And I was gathering these few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son. And in during this time, we're in a uh, natural uh, period of drought. And there is drought in the land. Uh, and so uh, the drought uh, has had its way uh, in the region and there has not been a surplus of supply, uh, food supply. And so the woman is saying we are down to our bare necessities. We are about out. I only have enough for my son and myself. And we're going to take this last meal and then die. And then Elijah responds to her with words of assurance. And he says, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me. And from what you have, bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and for your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. Now, let's put this in uh, social context. Uh, first, we see that this is a widow and so her husband is has passed and scripture doesn't tell us about the husband in this uh in these verses it just identifies that she is a widow it does not uh, mention to us whether or not that uh, her husband was a man of wealth or what her husband's status was, but it it tells us uh, that she is a widow. It doesn't name her. And because those other bits or details were not expounded upon in this text, then it places the woman in general context, whereby we could assume that her status was equivalent to that where a lot of women during these times, their wealth was based upon the wealth that the husband possessed. And the order of the day uh, was that um, many times that wealth would not be passed on to the wife <laughs> unless there was a son um, that uh, the wealth would have been passed on to the son. So here it has not been identified as to the social context, but we know that she is a widow and we don't know if her son was of age where he would have been entitled to the possessions that the father had obtained. But uh, we can assume that uh, she may have been a widow who was struggling or a widow who was uh, trying to uh, do her best uh, to sustain a comfortable lifestyle for herself and for her son. Uh, we also look at the dynamics of the challenge or the request that was placed upon her and put it in context 
with uh, there being a lack of and then there being the responsibility to provide for self and family. So one of the things that we can identify is, is that uh, this request does not come at the time of harvest. So this request does not come at a time when there is plenty. So sometimes we wonder that in life, why are we uh, pursued or why are we challenged or why does God intervene with us at times of testing? So, as I said, um, this request from Elijah did not come upon the woman when it was the time of harvest, when their, her cupboards were overflowing, when there was plenty of oil and flour. No, this request comes at a time when we are lacking. It comes at a time when we are already challenged from there being a lack of abundance and when we are down uh, to our bare necessities. God uh, uh, imposes experiences in life upon us uh, at times when we are already at our wit's end of trying to make things or make ends meet. And that is the setting that we find here, is, is that God is not only challenging the widow, but also challenging Elijah, taking him from a place of comfort, from a place of knowing, to a place of not knowing, and then requiring Elijah to say the things that I have said unto you. And so Elijah is stepping out on faith as well as requiring the widow to respond and step out on faith. So here we see the example and we see the response of how both parties, both entities in these verses are responding to what God has ushered in and spoken to both individuals. And we see that when our response is in accordance with what God is asking, then we are rewarded. And uh, that is the essence of our lesson, is, is that when we are in kind, when we are in harmony with the will of God, then we are rewarded. And what appeared to be devastation now become, becomes a reward. It re becomes a compensation for responding even when we had not, even when we had little, even when we thought that we were about to die as the widow did. Now the widow is rewarded with surplus. As the scripture says, the flour didn't run out and the jug of oil did not run dry. Now as I was reading through this lesson, um, I was led to another scripture that I think is quite fitting for our lesson, and I would like to share that with you. It's uh, from the 16th chapter of Luke. The 16th chapter of Luke, and it is the 10th verse. And the reading is such. It says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also. In much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. 
And I looked as I was reading through the lesson, that scripture came to mind. And I, as I read it, it was refreshing and rewarding to me. And I said, I'm going to share this in the lesson uh, because sometimes uh, our experiences in life, uh, I don't like to say that we uh, are testing because uh, uh, God doesn't get into um, things of uh, sometimes associated uh, with human nature. Uh, where uh, we go through trying to test each other. Uh, but God provides experiences uh, in life uh, not uh, to test us to see what we're going to do and what the outcome's going to be because God already knows what's going to be done, and already knows what the outcome is going to be. The experiences, though, are to enhance what God has already placed in us. And it is also to continue to build our faith in God and into the supply of God, which is never ending. And so... Uh, the experiences come uh, so that we see what God has placed within us and so that we understand that what God has given unto us can be enriched and enhanced if we continue to walk with God. And so when Luke said in the 16th chapter and the 10th verse, uh, and mentioned that those who are faithful in least will also be faithful in much. It, it is saying to us point blank that if we display that we have uh, within us a will and an attitude and a behavior and a practice to do unto God with little that when God blesses us with much, our attitude, our faith, our practice, our behavior will be likewise. That God allows us to see that we have certain abilities or certain cap capabilities to continue to display a leaning and an understanding into God's ways over that of ourselves. And so uh, the blessings come when we adhere to the utterance of God. And as our lesson closes with doing right is rewarded, as it was said, uh, we see that when she went away and did as Elijah told her, there was food every day for Elijah, for the woman and her son. And the substance that was near bare, that was almost empty, almost gone, the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. And so, as always, we hope that something was said in the lesson that would be a assurance for us in this journey and in our walk of life with God. And it would have been a blessing to us and just provided, uh, shall we say, some more morsels of bread for us to chew on and for us to understand God more. So our prayer, as always, is that the blessings of God will be upon us and upon the listeners, the hearers, and most certainly unto the doers of God's word. God bless you.